Now we present Herbert Marshall as the man called X. The Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Transcribed for you by Canon Towels, famous for color, for design, for durability. Among towels, America's number one best seller. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. But before we set out on tonight's adventure in mystery and drama, here's a word about dramatic values. Hurry, 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 hurry to the greatest May towel sales in history. Famous Canon towel sales. Packed with value, big, beautiful buys, terrific bargains. Don't miss them. Get to your store now and get in on these great money-saving events. Canon towels give you the most for your money in beauty, value, lovely color, and design. Canon towels absorb more, wear longer, stay lovely longer. No wonder more people buy Canon towels than all other towels combined. Get the most for your money. Get Canon. Big, fluffy, thirsty Canon towels. As summer comes, you always need more towels. Now's the time to get them. And the towels to get are Canons right now in these big Canon towel sales. See them in your newspaper. Get to your store quickly. Get in on the big, big, big Canon values. It has been said many times, of course that wherever there is danger in all the far-off places of the world, there you will find Ken Thurston, the man called X. And rare it is when Ken finds time to sleep even one night in his own Manhattan apartment, and rarer still when he sleeps there uninterrupted. Will Ken Thurston speak? Mr. Thurston. Oh, pig. Only by living such a good, clean life do I get so lucky. Oh, sure. What time is it, anyway? Well, here it's one time, mm. there's some other. Who knows? Mr. X, you gotta help me. Help you what? Why do I have to do it at 5 a.m.? So long, you call me later. Mr. Thurston, wait. Wait nothing. Go get some sleep. But you don't understand. I just run into a dead man. Oh, fine. Now get yourself a hotel room and sober up. But it's true, Mr. X. He just got in from Honolulu. And I met him accidentally in San Francisco. And then he brought me down here. And you know who it is? It's George Korloff. Jo- George Korloff? Oh, Korloff's been dead for six months. That's what I told him. But he says he can explain the whole thing. Mr. Thurston, I'm scared. I think he's planning to give me the business. Where are you calling from? Where are you now? Who knows? It's a big house that belongs to somebody down here at... Pig on. Operator. I'm sorry, sir. Your party has hung up. Operator, this is Ken Thurston. Oh, yes, Mr. Thurston. Will you trace that call, please, and throw me at the bureau right away? Well, when you come right down to it, Ken, there was never any actual proof that Karloff was killed in that plane. I know, Chief. It was more a matter of reasonable assumption. Right. But the plane did crash at sea. There's no question of that. Records washed up along the California coast for weeks afterward. But apparently Karloff didn't crash with it. Unless you don't think Zellschmidt's trying to pull a fast one of some kind, Ken? No, I don't think so. I'd say Koloff just outguessed us. Well, we aren't the only ones he outguessed. Walked into that Los Angeles aircraft plant wearing a phony beard, handed them a forged letter, and flew off in their latest model test plane. Their top secret job. Yeah, and he's been doing things like that for years, Chief. One of the slickest boys in the whole espionage business. Well, at least he slipped up on that job. Maybe. Huh? I got a hunch that that plane crash was part of Koloff's plan. But it wasn't an accident. But what could he gain by it, Ken? The plane itself was the only thing that... Uh... Hello? Yes, he's here. Just a second. 
after you, Ken. Thanks, Jeff. Ken Thurston speaking. This is Long Distance Operator 74, Mr. Thurston. I have the report you requested on that call. Yes? The call was placed from the residence of a Countess de Grazia in Carmel, California. Countess de Grazia, Carmel, California. Thanks very much, Operator. Hmm. Let's see, I can fly down. I can fly to San Francisco. I can hire a car there. Drive down to... Ken, who's the Countess de Grazia? I don't know. At the moment, she's apparently a Pagan's hostess. Hmm. That's quite a house party. Zell Schmidt and a dead man. A former dead man, Chief. There's a big difference. Call you from Carmel. I let you out, or would you rather beat the door open? Mr. Just relax now. Well, so that's the game. What's the news? I want out of here. All right, just as soon as I disconnect this booby trap. There. Well, your friend, the Countess, seems to have some unusual ideas of hospitality. Countess? Hey, Mr. X. The only one I saw was George, the double-crossing crook. He was supposed to pay me $500 to keep my mouth shut. I mean to... Uh... Well... You never were much good at blackmail, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, I swear, but... Never mind, never mind. So he lured you down here from San Francisco and then locked you in a broom closet. Where is he now? Who knows? I haven't heard a sound for the last hour. I guess he... No. Well, let's take a chance. Countess de Gracia residence. Hello, is the... is the Countess there? Not at the moment, but I'm her business agent. Could I help you? Why, uh, yes, this is the Eureka Travel Agency. Would you tell the Countess that I have a reservation on the Lurling to Hawaii tonight? I'd be happy to. I'll have her ticket at the pier office. Oh, and the ship sails in four hours, you know. Yes, I know. I'll tell her. Thanks a lot. Come on, Pagon. I got a car parked out in front. Where are we going, Mr. Thurston? Hawaii. Oh, I'm fine now that... Hawaii? In a car? We may. We don't get up to San Francisco before that ship sails. <laughs> The way I figured, Mr. Thurston, this Korlov guy just wanted everybody to think he was dead. That's the way it figures. You mean I'm right? Well, you can't always be wrong. It's against the law of averages. The only thing I can figure is why... Oops! Hey, are we trying to break a speed record or something? No, we're trying to find out whether that car back there is following us or... Hold on! Well, they're sure sticking to us tighter than a wet bathing suit. I know. And I think it's the same car that was parked down the street from the Mr. Countess. X, they're going to pass us. Wish I could get some speed out of this thing. Look, there's a curve coming. They're crowding us. Crowding us, there is. Crowding us. Come Hey, on. Hey, on. Where are you? Hello. Can you come down and give us a hand? No. Just let me get my face in, get out the truck. Fine. Pagan. Pagan, can you hear me? I saw your lights go over the bank. Stop my truck as quick as I could. Is anybody hurt? I'm all right. I guess my friend's knocked out. Here. Here, help me lift him up. Right. Okay. Now... Another car passed me to an 80 or better. What'd they do, sideswipe you? I guess so. It happened pretty fast. Yeah, turn the light on his face. Mm. Cut in the forehead. It's not bad. Yeah. A compress will stop the bleeding here. Let me get one here. One sure thing. We can always count on you boys in an emergency. Well, when you spend most of your time on the road, you get used to helping people. Never know when you need help yourself. There. You'll be all right in a few minutes. You heading towards San Francisco by any chance? No, I'm going south. 
I'll take you as far as Salinas Junction, though. Good, I can phone from there. You, uh... Got an important date of some kind up in Frisco? Oh, very important. It's with a countess and a dead man. Uh, huh? We're saving for Honolulu together. If I get there in time. Uh, what? Simply can't do a thing about it in spite of your credentials, Mr. Thurston. Ship sailed 20 minutes ago. That's that. You know whether the Countess de Gracia was on board? She was. I escorted her to her stateroom personally. Did you arrange a reservation for a man named George Koloff? No, only for the Countess. I wish I could help you, Mr. Thurston, but it's just too late. Ship's probably moving through the Golden Gate right at this minute. Well, that's fate, Mr. Thurston. Uh, maybe it's all for the best anyway. Those characters are pretty tough cookies. Uh, let's go get some seafood, eh? That's a good idea, Pagon. Only I'm having mine on board that ship. But I just told you, Mr. Thurston... Never mind. Do you know where I can charter a fast launch in a hurry? Well, yes, Good. I... Now, I'm going to put a call through to New York on this phone. You use the other one there to get the Lurleen by radio phone. I'll talk to the purser if you can get him. Or if not, the captain. Now, hurry. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, you mean we got to climb all the way up to the deck on that little ladder? Yeah, now wait, Pagan. Don't get caught between the launch and the side of the ship. Way to the launch, rise into the swell, and grab the ladder, Mr. Thurston. Right. Watch it, Pagan. Get ready. Here we go. So long, boys. Thanks for the lift. I don't know why I didn't desert when we were still on dry land. Climbing up ladders in the middle of the ocean. People trying to kill us. Oh, relax, Pagan. Now you'll have another chance to blackmail Koloff. Hey, I never thought of that. Here, let me give you a hand. Thanks. That's it. Uh. Well, now we seem to have quite a welcoming committee. Well, it's a little unusual to break the schedule, slow down the ship and take on passengers uh, I imagine, sea. yeah. Uh, but uh, I've had radio calls from New York, Washington, the Maritime Bureau, even from the owners of the line. Well, I pulled all the rank I could think of to get aboard, Percy. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, my name's Blake. Uh, I've arranged a pair of cabins for you, assigned your table, and... Oh, here's one of your table companions now. I was afraid I would have to make myself obvious, Mr. Blake. Uh, g Countess, uh, uh, this is Mr. Ken Thurston, uh, Carlos de Grazia. I've been looking forward to this, Countess. Really? Well, I must say it is a little unexpected on my side. Oh, you have to admit that neither of your two attempts was particularly clever. Touché. Uh, I didn't know that you had met. Only indirectly, Mr. Blake. Yes. And now that we do come face to face, we are outside the 12-mile limit. Uh, fortunately. Which means, of course, that we can make our own rules. Tell me, how's George? Koloff? Oh, <laughs> I think you are going to be a highly entertaining dinner companion, Mr. Thurston. I'll try my best. Maybe we'll find we have a lot of things in common, like airplanes and espionage, ghost stories, and George. Oh, yes, especially George. We'll continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. What the fireplace was to early American homes, the television set is to modern American homes. It's the center not only to your life, but your living room. So be smart. Insist not only on RCA Victor million-proof television, proven in well over two million homes, but on RCA Victor million-proof television in a console cabinet. You have your choice of a breathtaking variety of RCA Victor console models. Every one a furniture masterpiece, worthy to occupy the most important place in your living room. Period models like the Regency in the Rutland and the Hillsdale, which look like treasures straight out of an 18th century palace. Classic models like the Provincial, whose simple dignity makes it equally fitting for cottage or castle. Streamline models like the Modern, a clean line, functional beauty on a swivel base. See your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow for your RCA Victor television console. And to you and your family, in every sense of the word, happy looking. And now to continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. An international.
an espionage agent named George Korloff, supposedly dead for six months, is seen in a San Francisco bar, and the resulting chase finally leads Ken Thurston to a cabin aboard his ship, now one day out of Honolulu. Also aboard is Korloff's confederate, the Countess de Grazia, but so far the quarry himself has not been found. As far as I'm concerned, Mr. X, I don't even care if we never find that character. Oh? What's happened to your enthusiasm, Pagan? Enthusiasm? I've looked at passengers all week until I'm green in the face. And so what if I did find him? You wouldn't let me blackmail him anyhow. So that was your reason for trailing him down to Carmel? Well, why not? He, he's a crook. No. Yes, he is. Now, we dock in Honolulu tomorrow, and as far as I've been able to find out, Koloff isn't on board. Why not? Oh, don't ask me. He admitted to you that he'd just come from Hawaii. And as soon as he talked to the Countess, she headed for there. Just doesn't make sense that he wouldn't go along with her. Doesn't make sense to me either way, Mr. Thurston. I don't think that stolen plane crashed accidentally. I think Koloff planned it that way. But why? And where does the Countess come into it? Why this trip to Honolulu? Unless... Unless what, Mr. X? It's a possibility. Let's see, the purser, 272. I wish I knew what you're talking about. Hello, Mr. Blake? Ken Thurston. Say, I wonder if you can meet me in the baggage hold in five minutes. Yes, it may be very important. Goodbye. Let's see now. The Countess de Grazia's baggage should be in cubicle 17 right here ahead of us, Mr. Thurston. Of course, she has a pair of wardrobe trunks and some other luggage with her in her cabin. I know, and it'll be tough to get into it. I'm hoping we find something here. Find... Find what, Mr. Thurston? I don't know, Pedro. Oh, here we are. Now, her things are right against the bunker here, I believe. Uh, oh, yes, uh, these two steamer trunks and uh, this wooden case. Uh, well, the trunks could be legitimate. But this wooden case... Heavy, too, Mr. Mr. Blake. Have you got anything but use to pry the lid off? Well, uh, one of these steel cargo wedges ought to do the job. Uh... Uh, don't say we, though, Mr. Thurston. My orders to cooperate only go so far. Oh, thanks. Maybe a wild goose chase, but it's well tying. Oh, I wish somebody would tell me. What are we looking for? I did tell you, Pagan. I don't know. Well, let's see what the Countess is taking. To... It looks awful complicated. Uh, well, do you know what it is, Mr. Thurston? Yeah, I know what it is. One of the latest models of the new robot stabilizer for jet fighter planes. A top military secret. Well. So that was Koloff's game. What do you mean? He wasn't after the whole plane, only this stabilizer. He must have taken it off, parachuted into the water with it, and left the plane to crash into the ocean. I wonder if the Countess owns a yacht. As a matter of fact, she does, Mr. Thurston. I heard her discussing it with one of the other passengers a few evenings ago. Ah. And she probably has a prospective buyer for this thing waiting in Honolulu. Only what's happened to her partner, Cola? Look, Mr. Thurston. This name on the outside of the case. Leo Bornlin, Honolulu. Yeah, she's keeping herself covered. Hmm? In case of trouble, she can claim she never saw the case before. I think I'd better find out a little more about the Countess. Well, the ship's radio is yours, Mr. Thurston. Anytime you want to use it. Thanks. Meanwhile, I wonder if I could borrow about a dozen of those steel cargo wedges. Well, champagne. They are going all out this evening. Last night of the voyage, Countess, is the customary captain's dinner. And the last one we shall have together, Mr. Thurston. I'm going to miss these delightful little uh, conversational interludes. Oh, I thought they'd be more like passages at arms. But clever. And clever men are so rare. Why, I am sure you must have fathomed all of my darkest secrets by now. I don't know. I'm afraid you've beaten me there. I imagine you know much more about me than I know about you. Well, I, I was born of impoverished but piously honest Ukrainian peasant stock. Yes, and I... at the age of two, you were kidnapped by a roving band of gypsies. You have found out. But it was only after narrowly avoiding being sold in the slave market in Algiers that you decided to become a spy. Oh, dear, I have no intention of telling that part. And it was then that you adopted the name Countess de Grazia. Ah, uh, the Count was quite old and an awful bore. I poisoned him for his time. Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, let that be a warning to you, Mr. Thurston. The poison, you mean, huh? Oh, oh. 
I'm tasting the wine very carefully. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry to bother you, Mr. Thurston, but I thought this radiogram might be important. Oh, thanks, Mr. Brick. Do you mind, Countess? Not at all. Go right ahead. Thanks. Hmm? Uh-huh. Well, excuse me. What? Aren't we going to go on with my history, Mr. Thurston? Uh, I don't think so. You see, it's quite unnecessary now. Good night. <laughs> I'm starved, Mr. Thurston. What a low-down trick to leave me here alone, this cabin, for a whole hour and ten minutes. Well, we flipped a coin to see who ate first, Pagan. I know, Using but... Using your double-headed nickel. Yes, but I thought I had the one with the double tails. You didn't, though. Here it is. Oh, I picked pocket. Mr. Rick, sometimes I think you, you're as bad as, as, as that countess cookie. No, I doubt that. And according to this radiogram, she's not a countess. What do you mean? That's only one of the aliases she uses. She manages to hold passports from three different countries been suspected of espionage over and over and never been convicted. Oh, well, you may as well go on down and eat, Pagan. I'll take care of the baby in the closet there. Boy, you only have to tell me once. All the great food they got on this boat, the only chance I... The only chance I... Mr. Rex, door's locked. I see. Well, back away from that porthole. Hey, somebody shoved the nozzle some kind through the... That's a live steam hose. Here, into this closet. Quick! I don't get it, Mr. Thurston. What was the idea? The idea was to scold us if we... Yeah, there it goes. Steam. I knew I shouldn't have come to this boat. Come on now, here. Help me stuff some clothes in the cracks around the door. It's getting hot, Mr. Rex. It's going to... It's going to get hotter. <laughs> we won't last two minutes in here unless... It's too hot even to... Uh, Mr. Thurston, I think... I think I'm... Very young, you... You may be lucky. It's hotter and hotter. Uh, help! In here! Where? Uh, here they are. Now give me a hand. That's it. Drag them out into the air. Boy, it's hot in here. That's it. Now. Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston, can you hear me? Uh, uh, that's you, Blake? Yes. What happened, Mr. Thurston? Somebody tried to boil us with a steam hose. I can't understand it. <laughs> Nobody but the crew would know where to find a hose, and, and they The said... crew? Well, of course. What? double-checked every passenger on board, but I, I didn't check the crew. Help me up, Mr. Blake. Let's go. This is Mr. Hawkins, our chief engineer. Mr. Thurston, Charlie. Oh, how do you do? I told you about Mr. Thurston's authority. Oh, yeah. Well, anything I can do to help... Well, what we're doing is checking the crew, Charlie. We've pretty well covered the deck gang already. Looking for a man named Korloff. Korloff. No, no, there's nobody by that name in my bunch. Well, you're probably using an assumed name, Mr. Hawkins. In fact, um, how about Bornlin? Leo Bornlin. Bornlin. Oh, yes, yes. One of my oilers is named Bornlin. Good. He's working down there now on the number two injector pump. Uh, you want to talk to him? If he's the right man, I want a good deal more than just a talk. Oh, well, come on. I'll show you where he is. Oh, uh, watch your step. These deck plates get kind of slippery with oil sometimes. Oh, sure. Oh, there you are, Mr. Thurston. He's not working in the galley. I looked over the whole bunch. I think we found him, Pagon. This is a man here in the engine crew with a name the same as the one on that wooden case. He ought to get life. Trying to make a clam bake out of us. Well, that's born in yonder, bending over that pump slide. <gasps> that's him, Mr. Thurston. That's God. Yeah. Well, the rest of you better wait here. Wait. Uh, he's seen us, Mr. Thurston. Oh, look out, he's got a gun. Call off, drop it. Back all of you. stop. Oh, he's running around behind that pump. Yeah. Koloff, drop that gun. Oh, right into the slide valve. Come on. Uh. Oh, that pump, Mr. Thurston. Look, it didn't even slow down. Let's go on deck and get some fresh air. Boy, what a night, Mr. X. A million stars. For once, you didn't make an overstatement. Hey, what's that glow in the sky? 
way up ahead there. Honolulu, I imagine. They're due to dock at midnight. Oh, so that's why there's parties going on all over the ship. Hey, maybe we're to go and celebrate too, Mr. Thurston. Some other time, Pedro. Oh, cheer up, Mr. X. Everything's solved now. And so what if that Karloff's dead? He he had it coming. And that phony countess. Hey, what are you going to do with about her? Nothing. Nothing? You mean you're not going to run her in? It wouldn't do any good. I've got no evidence on her. She's beaten a lot tougher cases than this. Oh, but, but you can't just let her get away. Oh, I doubt very much you'll get away, Pagan. Ten to one, she has a buyer for that stabilizer waiting for in Honolulu. Well, maybe so, but... collect a good deal of money from him. Yeah, well, sure. When he opens that wooden case and finds there's nothing in it but steel cargo wedges, well, I think he might be a little vindictive. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. And in the meantime, we take the real stabilizer back to the United States. The real stabilizer, huh? Oh, it's a valuable piece of military equipment, all right. It's a good thing it didn't fall into the wrong hands. But the way this shaky world goes wobbling around off balance... I don't think the real stabilizer's been invented yet. Now, there would be a cause for celebration. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. If you suffer from pains or headaches, neuritis or neuralgia, you should discover what many thousands have known for years, that Anison brings incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Probably at some time you've received an envelope containing Anison tablets from your physician or dentist. Thousands of people have been introduced to Anison this way. Try Anison yourself the next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted at how quickly relief can come. Anison is spelled... A-N-A-C-I-N. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100 for your medicine cabinet. Ask for Anison today. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Those you heard in tonight's cast were Joan Banks, Will Wright, Peter Leeds, George Neese, Harry Lang, and Carlton Young. There's enough intrigue in next week's story to fill a book, and Ken finds himself right in the middle of it. And that on his back, as usual, will be Leon Belasco as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Man Called X is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Transcribed for you by Cannon Towels. Famous for color, for design, for durability. Among Towels, America's number one best seller. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as a Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station... This is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in The Life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC.